to the same room. Welcome back to the same room. On this episode, we're going to piggyback off on the conversation we had with Dr. Karen Lineleaf, the incredible neuroscientist and best-selling author, as well as Amber Riley, the beautiful actress who is best known for her recurring role on Glee and most recently Tyler Perry's Nobody's Fool. Now, we left you speaking about Brainwashed. Are we conditioned to fail? On part two of this conversation, we're gonna be speaking about getting back to the real you. And it's gonna be practical wisdom. You don't wanna miss this. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to get back to the truest version of ourselves. You know, what I loved about part one of this episode is that we discussed about the different ways that we have been conditioned to mm -hmm. almost live below our God-given potential. Mm -hmm. And so with this, we're gonna talk about more practical steps on how we heal and how we get back to that perfect you as a book that you've Love written it, yeah. um i know amber earlier in the first part of this episode you touched on your anxiety how did you um just to recap how did you get to the other side of it your healing journey what was that like for you well i'm definitely still in it um <laughs> that's beautiful because you know, anxieties come and yeah. you know and and all of that and a, a lot of uh my reactions were habitual but I got um, I got to a point where it started affecting me physically, mm -hmm. and 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 really actually started affecting my voice. Wow. Um, while I was singing, I was getting stones and things on my um, vocal cords. My vocal mm -hmm. cords really bad. Wow. And um, it was it was literally just because of anxiety. There was no <laughs> other reason that I should have been. <laughs> Getting, getting strep or whatever the case or mm -hmm. tonsillitis that much. I was getting it like every two weeks, every three weeks. And like nodules. And nodule. And it was it was literally because so I had to get to a point where, okay, this isn't working. These this this medication and all of that is not working. How do I um how how do I actually heal as opposed to medicate? Because mm -hmm. medicate is numbing. That's all that it was that it was doing yeah. for me so i had to get to a point of um awareness mm -hmm. and take responsibility and understand and i was trying to find and understand what was what was actually happening because getting a diagnosis and getting medication doesn't explain anything mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. putting a name on what's happening That's now right. you just have a name how worse. did that naturally occur in your body um what do you mean? How is it natural? No, I'm saying that even when you talk about to find out what oh, was yes. happening, to find out how did this start, yeah, what was the trace? Honestly, I do not even remember how <laughs> I, found, <laughs> I found her on YouTube. I really don't know. I can't to this day remember. But I, I, I mean, I, I'll just say it was a God thing for me. It was yeah. like that aha moment that I came to um, where like researching and understanding, um, wanting, having that thirst for knowledge, understanding because I'm a nerd anyway, and yeah. I like to read books, and I yeah. like to watch lectures, and like it's just a natural inclination for me to just want to read about things. Um, so getting to that place, it was that it was that dealing with it physically, um, and it affecting my livelihood yeah. at this mm -hmm. point, um, and finding finding real help and understanding that it's going to be a journey and it's going to be work. Yeah. Because it's not instantaneous. Mm. Yeah. There's no quick fix. That's why I say I haven't arrived. You yeah. know, I don't, I'm, mm. I, I can't really, I can tell but you, you know, what's what, what worked almost, for me. The journey so almost seems to me as the place of arrival. Mm -hmm. That when you're on mm -hmm. that journey, because I don't think that, I don't even think there's anything in life where we arrive to. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that the moment that we begin the journey, whether it's healing, whether it's awareness, um, whatever it is that the journey is, that point of arrival to me because even just like when we talk about you know the god that we serve he's endless there is no destination to him That's and it. i think mm -hmm. that that mirrors life that there mm -hmm. is no destination actual destination for healing or destination for this you know there's the the fact that you begin the journey is the place of arrival so i love that that mm -hmm. it's still a healing process for you because mm -hmm. even dr leaf can can someone realistically say that I am at my, you know, I've reached the greatest place I will ever be in healing or no. in wholeness? No. I don't believe they can. I don't yeah. believe just from the, I think the biggest thing that can block us is having goals. Yeah. Because Ooh, the good. goals are like this. And then you forget all about the process, which is the ongoing thing. And I talk about um, the perfect you being a blueprint. 
mm. and a blueprint that's you know it's, it's a lifelong blueprint that you're constantly learning to a blueprint being a you know the blueprint of a home or something like that yeah. it takes forever then you keep adding and changing and you build it this way and you add and so it is a continual thing so it shouldn't be the goal that should be driving us it should mm -hmm. be the process that should be driving us I love that. so then being anxiety free is not a good goal but going through the process of is drop forget the word goal we're so goal orientated that it's keeping us blocked go, go into the process and the process is something that we need to enjoy because the process then is the ability for us to see that there's endless possibilities. Yeah. Um, the glass is half full. There's, you know, I can do, there's so much more expectation. There's so much more. The little tiny each day, the tiny bit of progress. Because even the whole concept exactly. of goals or destination, it takes us away from being present exactly. in the moment until we're trying powerful, to yeah. achieve this goal. And then we lose sense of self. And yes. we lose presence and and then it's I think that's where, you know, these toxic thoughts start coming because then you start comparing yourself yeah. to where am I to where my goal is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And there's yeah. this, this fluid this this like vacuum in between. Mm -hmm. And then in that process we compare because someone else is doing it differently. Meanwhile, well, you'd make a lousy someone else. Right. So we need to live in the nowness because if you look at quantum physics, for example, it really helps us understand eternity. And God is eternal, we are eternal and love is eternal. And I often talk about godness and love so that mm -hmm. we don't um, make something that's so big too small to try and fit in our little boxes. <laughs> but if we go vast and beyond that, we realize yeah. that if this power of God created present, past and future, as that means that there isn't actually, it blends. So nowness is very important. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the word yeah. nowness. We need to live in the nowness. Because I you, even believe that, that God is future, in an it's... eternal now. <laughs> exactly, that's the eternal he's now. Always, that's how I feel. He's in a now yes. all the time. <laughs> I can <laughs> name it, but yes, yeah, exactly. that's, that's a good point. And yeah. when, you, when you pray, for example, when you um, think of the future or something like that, and you're praying for the future, or you're praying for your kids, or you're praying for something that's going to happen or something, you are actually, in essence, you know, bringing the future into the present. Yeah. And the future then changes the past. And we have this nowness is a very different commodity to a goal of space and time where you've got to walk like this. We need to get mm -hmm. away from that and we need to need to get more bigger in our vision about ourselves. And, that, that. and that's all part of awareness. You know, it's I all part that. of but we, within that we need our little rituals. Within that we need our techniques. Within and that's where science is very, very powerful. Science yeah. shows us that we live in the nowness, but science also shows us that renewing of the mind is very doable. Mm -hmm. That you're very powerful, that your brain's brilliant, that your brain is only as only as brilliant as your mind is operating in its brilliance. And so therefore we need to make our brain operate at its optimal level. And that's some of the research that I've done is how if, if thoughts are real and mm -hmm. if we've got to manage our mind that manages everything else, what is the result of mind? Mind, thoughts. So mind produces thoughts. Yeah. Thoughts produce actions. So what you said it actually earlier on, what you say and what you do, you're gonna, it's, what's in you is going to come out of you. Yes. That's coming yeah. from your thoughts. So if we can understand how a thought builds and if we can then realize that in my awareness and in my gathering this awareness and in my reconceptualization, all these fancy words and all this nowness, all this mm -hmm. almost philosophical stuff, what's the practical side of that? And that's what I wanted to find for my patients and for people in places, including myself, my family, all the people that I could help. How do you do all this philosophical great stuff <laughs> that we all know we should be doing? What do you, like you, know, you said, what do you do? What I are really steps? admire your, your study and your research, especially when it comes to, because it's not even far-fetched. It's actually simple. It's very simple. It, simple. It's, it's, more, very it's simple. easier than it's trying really to simple. go on. You well, know, she made a, it simple. Right. It's not simple. <laughs> but her gift was making it you simple. You know, I agree. I agree. Because it just, it, when you talk about the mind, because we're, we think, like we know the thoughts that we think mm -hmm. about. We know the emotions. We know the triggers when we're around certain things, when we look at certain things. Um, and what I love about that is because you talk about how the mind has the power to do for the brain what medication cannot do. What, exactly. And, and I love that because when you talked about medication just being like, t like numb, you know, almost like a numbness, Which not is even what they do, effective. The they their brain disabling, yeah. basically. And I think yeah. that, you know, a lot of people watching this don't even realize mm -hmm. that a lot of these, you know, antidepressants and that anti are actually mm -hmm. advertised to heal 
are causing more brain yeah, they're damage. They're not healing anything. Yeah. That's a complete mm-hmm. and utter fallacy. They're not scientific. They don't heal. They simply numb. So that if you're wow. in a really bad place, the numbing, you may feel better for a season or a time or a week or a day. But the addiction that they cause, because they're very addictive, and the side effects which you would have experienced, wow. I'm sure you got. Yeah, yeah you and did. the withdrawal is terrible. And patients are not given enough information about that. Wow. But that's, so that's why it can't be medical. So it becomes an addiction it's to very addictive. feel numb. I mean, you have to yeah. wean yourself. Off. off of it yeah. very very you can't carefully. just stop no it. no you will get so sick yeah. and you get suicidal really sick. and all kinds of stuff yeah you can I have out. I have one story that I always tell people I was on a, a, a particular medication and I touched um was doing my hair and I touched a curling iron and I had almost no reaction to it you're joking yeah that's that's one of the and things it was hot can, it was yeah. hot my that's hand burned th- and I went yeah, that's oh. one of the side effects of anti-anxiety wow. medications. Completely no reaction to it. It numbs wow. your, it actually goes, it's an anesthetic, so it numbs your pain senses. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the side effects that can happen. And, it, and so really that's just a blanket. It's, it's a blanket. Just it's a, a blanket. It's a chemical blanket and it's not wow. helping a person deal with the issues. But the fact is that something has happened to you or you've create, you've got into a toxic pattern, one of those two. Mm-hmm. So and how do we heal? How do we, you know, what are practical ways that we heal from trauma? Okay, so what people are doing, which is very popular, and you mentioned this mm-hmm. kind of earlier on, people are very aware of being mindful. Yes. Mindfulness is very popular. As yes, you you kind is. of said it, mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the sense of being aware, in the sense of being aware in the moment, in the sense of calming yourself down. That's a, excellent, but it's only step one. You mm-hmm. have to go beyond mindfulness. You said it in the first episode, what next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like what next? <laughs> right. There's the chemical blanket, the diagnosis, the th- but what next? Okay, yeah. so what I found with my work, my research, myself, my patients, and I worked in South Africa, I don't know if you're aware, I come from South Africa, yes. and I yeah. worked for 25 years in some of the worst parts of South Africa. Wow in where people were traumatized, raped, abused, AIDS victims, victims of apartheid, like trauma like you cannot believe. So I had to go in with something that was very simple, very practical, and I also work with people, even my practice in very traumatic Mm -hmm. situations, also with severe learning disabilities and severe traumas, uh, dementias and um, ADHD, and um, which doesn't actually exist, learning disabilities, the correct version, traumatic brain injuries. So I really worked with extreme populations as well as working with all of us, which is all of us, um, the human condition, you know, all of us. So when I say in my practice, okay, let me rephrase that to to show you, to to simplify this, sorry, I got a bit carried away there, was too much information. (laughs) I worked with extreme situations to show you that this technique has worked in extreme conditions, but it also works with all of us. So there are people that are in extreme conditions, not everyone is in a war, not everyone is in, in whatever situation. We all have different experiences. So I had to find something about the mind and the brain and the mind-brain connection that worked for everyone, including me, okay? Mm. And being a mother, wife, and being able to help people. And that's where I decided to study the mind-brain connection and the science of thought and develop all my theories and work around that. And essentially, we've got to go, there's five steps. I mean, it's literally five steps that your brain goes, your mind does, that makes your brain come right. And Mm. those five steps are Um, steps that I've built into all my work, all my books. I'm doing a whole clinical trial about them now. I've got an app that's coming out because, and it's got many parts to it, but the basic core steps involve being mindful, being aware, taking responsibility. But Mm -hmm. those are big words. So being mindful, what is it actually? It's gathering awareness. It's simply gathering awareness of what am I thinking about? Having the courage to face myself and to look at myself and think, okay, why am I irritated right now? Mm-hmm. Or That's why good. am I frustrated right now? So or why being am I mindful right of now? that emotion, of exactly. that thought. And then, exactly that, linking it to the body. You said you got vocal nodules, mm-hmm. little bumps on your vocal mm-hmm. cords, and you said something very insightful that was your anxiety that caused that, the mind-brain connection. It is so true. Our minds change, literally change our physical structure. Our minds are building right now at 400 billion actions per second. Our minds are making little computers in our brain, billions of them, at the speed of 400 billion actions per second and faster wow. to hold these words. Those little things, those little protein computers in our brain control all 75 to 100 trillion cells of the body. So, so what I'm saying in English is that every thought, every thought, I know that's a lot to process. So what does it mean? It means that your thoughts control every single thing physically about you. That's beautiful. So when you send that, so what would happen in what happened in your case, and I mean the vulnerability you showed, I 
tremendous admiration. Well done for, for saying what you said because yeah. your insight there was outstanding, mm -hmm. okay? So what you did was generate this energy from the anxiety, from the anxiety is just the, in the symptom as I've been saying. So there was something deep down inside and that toxic energy was quantum energy moving through your brain, messing up the chemical energy in your brain, messing up the chemical energy in your blood and the thing you used the most, which was your vocal cords, mm -hmm. wow. got this <laughs> constant yeah. pounding of toxic energy, yeah. which wow. then created an abrasion. You would have used your vocal cords mm -hmm. incorrectly and it would have created nodules because nodules are just basically when the vocal cords hit, as you yes. know. Okay, mm -hmm. I did, Part of my training was voice. I had to do voice therapy and all that kind of stuff, so I know all about that too. So basically that's what you did. You, you literally, and now that's not blaming you or making you feel bad or anything. Mm -hmm. You actually took ownership. You became aware. You did step one. You became aware and you then started going to step two without even being aware of it. And step two is, is the deep reflection about asking and answering and discussing with yourself, okay, why do I have this anxiety? Once the pulls, the diagnosis, mm. this is still in my life. So what, and you, I'm telling you, that's not just one tree you found, you found probably 50 and every, and then there's another one. And then this branch, you realize is that and that and that and that. And we see, so we see like a tree grows branches and how branches are in a forest connected to other trees in a jungle. They're all kind of the, the weed. So you start these, to discover what was connected to. Yeah, you yeah. start seeing the connections and then you start seeing, ah, oh, that pattern and, and that is the life long journey yeah. so that reflection is, is step number two step number three is the verbalization of this the mm -hmm. actual putting words to this and that's where writing is very powerful because mm -hmm. it creates a cognitive organization in the brain a fluency in the brain it forces the brain to kind of get ordered it brings order out of chaos so the third step is to bring order out of chaos via adding words and descriptions and sentences and writing the stuff down the fourth step is to actually then bravely look at what you have found mm. and not to be scared. I always tell people to stick that information visually in your mind into a building. So here you're doing this, I'm aware of this thing. I am thinking about this thing. I am verbalizing and writing down this thing, but I'm not this thing because that's mm. not who you are, that's who that's you are. Good. So you take that thing and you stick it in this big building with all these windows. So how and do you they stick do this that? in your mind. So okay, imagine now, if you close your eyes okay. now, right now, just imagine, just visualize a big, huge building mm. and see this issue inside there and it's sealed. It's one of those windows that's sealed and you're on the outside. You're oh, wow. in love. You're immersed in, in God's love. You're immersed in a safe space. You're safe. You're immersed mm. in your true identity, your perfect, your nature, the resilience of your mind, the powerful mind. You do not have a spirit of fear, but you have a spirit of love and power and soundness. That is the design of your brain. That's the design of your body. That's, the, that's where you stand. So what you do is you objectify the situation. So that's not me. That's what I've done. It's a failure. So what? It's an incorrect reaction. So what? I'm not going to let that throw me. I've learned a thousand things like Thomas Edison about why that's not a failure. And that, that kills the, the power of guilt. Kills the shame. power of guilt, absolutely. Yeah. It also brought this in the light. Now, no longer is this down here, it's up here. The drugs put it down there. The scriptures as magic potions put it down there. The guilt <laughs> kept it down there. This is now brought it up here. Now I can do something. Now I can say, okay, yeah. you're going to live in that window of that house over there. You're going to stay in that. I'm going to put it down like this. And then I'm walking forth. away from you. Exactly. So I'm mm. aware. I am aware. I am reflecting. Ask, answer, discuss. I am not going to keep this in me or on me. I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to verbalize. Write that down. I'm going to look look at this but from a safe space and then I'm going to have a little active action some kind of what can I do today to help me um, deal with that element maybe this branch maybe this branch I dealt with today and yeah. then maybe that branch tomorrow so and what do you mean just, by that like when it's an action so, are, so it's are a we little taking, action like yeah. so then I whatever you've discovered in that process I've just described and by the yeah. way this process you can do in seven minutes literally you can you take seven minutes you take like one it's five steps and you spend about a minute and a half and that each. is what you discuss in the 21 day 21 day brain detox, brain detox which is in this book here and brain. then I also explain it in my latest book I explain yeah. it from a building perspective the same five steps yeah. I use in here, I use how to build your brain, which is an essential part of mental health. Yeah. And then I have an app coming out called the Switch app, which is in the final stages of production now. And that literally on your phone, while you're at the gym, whatever, 15. You can do, yeah, take the it time. It takes you through, and I build you through a process over 21 days, times three, 63 days. What we don't realize is that it takes 21 days to build a long-term memory. It mm. takes 63 days to full minimum to build a habit. 
wow, habits wow. and that's daily consistent. So, and we've been taught that it takes 21, 21 days, days to change a habit. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it takes, you can't, and most people, by the way, most people give up after about four days. Most people, if you look at the research, three, four days, that's why the goals are so bad because we set this goal and we just cannot achieve this goal mm -hmm. quick enough. So we change the goal, we change the goal, we change the goal. But this is a process I'm talking about. I'm talking about a process of five steps that you yeah. are actually taking. So what I recommend, what taught my patients to do, what this does, what the app does, is it's 7 to 15 minutes a day that you deal with a toxic issue. You don't deal with it after that in the day. The only thing you do after that in the day is you take step number five, which is a mm -hmm. little exercise, which could be something as simple as each time I say, if only. Maybe that's, I worked on that, was one of my most recent thoughts that I was working on. I used to always say, if only I did it this way. I don't know if any of you guys do that. <laughs> and then I would torment myself. So I would, um, so if, if during the course of a day for my little act of reach, um, I would put it in my phone. On the app, there's a little thing where it pops up, seven, and it pops up during the day, and I keep it up there for the day. Mm -hmm. And it's um, practice your if only today, or if you come up with if only, capture that and immediately stop it. And that is that action that's, that's action. been taken. Or it could be you sing a little song, or it could be Evangelina Flower. Yeah. It could be, generally your active reach will come out of the process as you do the five steps that morning. There'll be some little logical, okay, today all I'm going to deal with is this tiny little yeah. thing, a tiny, and it, people, the thing with goals is that people want to make a big, huge splash. And that's not <laughs> going to have sustainability. Yeah. Sustainability comes from tiny changes every day over time yeah. and over, after 63 days you have actually reconceptualized, rewired, turned that toxic tree which is in the building into a something that's manageable into yeah. the healthy And I, I love it because even in your in, in um, switch on your brain you talk about how it doesn't even end at the 63 days no, like that no. is, and that, it, that, that's that takes away that goal mindset mm -hmm. where it's takes just away, yeah. a lifestyle of what you do. It's a lifestyle because yeah. that's going to then from that will generate and we all have done this. Oh, well, I thought it was if only. Actually, it was that was only one part. So then you do another 63 mm -hmm. days and another 63 days. And, and that's the lifelong journey. It's the yeah. lifestyle. You know, two things I really picked up from um, what you shared. One, when you talked about mindfulness, it made me, I was reminded by the scripture, as a man thinks, so is he. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, again, of the heart, the mouth <laughs> yeah. speaks, all science those things. revealing the word of God. Exactly. Um, but also, Amber, when you were talking about medication, and you were talking in regards to, as we were talking about just the different, like the numbness and medication mm, mm, and mm. how like the with brain damage that it yeah. causes. Which what? can heal by the way. Yeah. This process of just That's what I wanted healing. To I want up. to yeah. reassure that everyone, That even with the heals. brain damage, like no matter how far a person is, that it's this steps. This renewing of the no mind No matter changes. how severe it is, it heals the mind. It heals. That's the beautiful. The mind is being healed, the mind is being renewed. And as you're renewing the mind, the mind then puts that energy through the brain. So this is, energy is not something scary. Without energy, there would be no lights in this room. There would be no production today. Mm -hmm. There would be no energy, be all dead. So energy is what is basically flowing through our yeah. body and flowing and keeping the world going around. Because even so, if you talk about overcoming trauma, one of the things that I love that you said was that forgiveness is one of the main keys to overcoming trauma. And Amber, I want to ask you, why do you mm -hmm. think that, because I've noticed that forgiveness is a huge topic mm -hmm. in life. Um, when you, if you ever ask someone, I don't know, this is just my um, scientific research by Stephanie. <laughs> but um, I find it interesting that majority of people deal with offense. Majority mm -hmm. of people deal with hurt, mm -hmm. deal with um, unforgiveness. In the industry, do you, is that something that you commonly see where unforgiveness is a big thing and why do people struggle with forgiveness? Um, I think forgiveness is just a big, it's a big issue in mm -hmm. general and it has mm -hmm. a lot to do with how you, how you've shaped and formed your identity a lot of times and a lot yeah. of us shape and form our identity as victims, you know, because it justifies what, justifies what happened to mm -hmm. you when you can say that person did this to me mm -hmm. yeah. and now... I, you know, react this way, again, taking the responsibility out of your actions because this person did A, B, and C, now I can do D, you know, um, mm, and forgiveness is, and forgiveness is, it's a hard, it's one of the things that I really had to work through, um, because no, it wasn't your, your fault, 
you know, and you're dealing with what it is that you're dealing with. But like I said, my trauma was my responsibility. So now yeah. I have to do what I need to do yeah. to move forward in my life because that person is... You control that reaction. <laughs> that person's gone. That's it. Yeah. You control that reaction. Yeah, they're gone. And, and yeah. yeah, I didn't. I couldn't put it that way, but that That's is what, what I'm doing. That's what you were essentially doing. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, scientifically, um, basically, it, there's a principle in quantum physics called entanglement. And all that means is the most logical thing. We're all connected. Mm -hmm. Everything, all humanity is connected. That is how we are designed. Love connects us as, human, as humans. And in quantum physics, if two particles are um, pushed apart by thousands, I mean, they push apart very, very far apart. If one turns mm -hmm. this way, the other one will immediately turn that way. Einstein used to call this um, basically a ghostly action at a distant kind of thing. What it means essentially with forgiveness is that you are still entangled. If someone hurts you, and you are then still thinking about that. Mm -hmm. You are still connected. You are still, they spin that way, you spin that way. Yep. They jump this way, you jump that way. So wow. there's a puppet connection. So by forgiveness, a puppet connection. Mm -hmm, wow. <laughs> there's the marionette, you the marionette, you're being played. So therefore, when you forgive, you cut the strings. So it doesn't excuse what the person has gone has done to mm -hmm. you because what they've done is wrong. But they've got to deal with that. It's not for you to fix them. Yeah. It's for you to deal with your reaction or you're going to be a horrible person. That's quite frankly. Forgiveness, keeping that unforgiveness makes you bitter. Yep. Bitter yeah. makes and you cannot hide it. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you think the person that's irritating you or the person's whatever, that, that it's connected. Because so, again, that thought is real in your mind. It's real mm -hmm. and it's generating energy. Yeah. It's generating that connectedness. So forgiveness does create create the disentanglement. No, I, I think that even when we just continue this conversation on forgiveness, I always wonder, um, because, like, okay, let's say, for example, in the church, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about forgive and forgive and forget and things like that. Um, but I do believe that forgiveness goes beyond the commandment because, again, it's dealing with when you talk about how everything, our actions are produced by our thought life. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a change of perception mm -hmm. about the person or what they did. And we may not understand why that happened mm -hmm. in particular. You mm -hmm. never understand why mm -hmm. that happened. But I, I do believe that how we perceive um, their actions is what ought to change because when God says, you know, forgive as a commandment, it's almost like that commandment is coupled by some form of revelation about life. Mm. And, you know, in, in one That's of the things good. that I mm. experienced when I was, I can I was probably like my early teens or maybe 12 or something like that. So my father was murdered mm. and Gosh, we sorry. then realized, at, I think I was about 11 or 12 or something like that, that my, an uncle of mine, who I was very close to was the person that um, orchestrated his death. Oh my gosh. Wow. That he sent assassins to, to, you know, murder my father. Mm. And when that came up, I was like, what? <laughs> what just happened? Because this was an mm. uncle who was very close to me. And it was interesting because at that stage, I, I felt almost as though God was showing me how he, how he views things and how he perceives things. And so I never had any resentment in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I was, it bothered me because I was like, God, I want to be angry. I want to be angry for my mother because my mother mm -hmm. is broken and she's crying. And I'm like, why am I not angry? Mm -hmm. It feels like this is not even my natural emotion. It feels like you're doing something here. And as I prayed concerning it, and what he spoke to me about was that it was almost like he was teaching me that for me to hold anger against him was to hold uh, a truth about him that that is to hold an idea about him that's not true and he mm -hmm. said your uncle did not kill your father jealousy killed your father and mm -hmm. i find that fascinating because when you talk about the different steps in healing that at a point you i believe it's step four where you disconnect yourself with the toxicness where you mm -hmm. say I am not what made me toxic. I am not mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we start perceiving people that way, mm -hmm. that yes, you hurt me, but what hurt me is not the true version of you. Mm -hmm. What hurt me is not the highest version of you. Because one thing God said to me that stuck with me for the rest of my life was that no one will ever hurt you from a place of love 
or from mm. a place of wholeness. Mm. Which is the perfect you nature. Which is the which perfect is you the nature. Wife will have. Exactly. Mm. So I think that even when we talk about forgiveness, that I think it's very it's a very it's very difficult for mm. people because either we're trying to understand why they did it mm. and understanding why they did it from the mindset of that is who they are. Exactly. Why are you that way? And and you your perspective, you can't get in their head. Mm -hmm. And so we react now mm -hmm. in this state of bondage because even when we recognize the bondage we're in, we still mm -hmm. we blame, we still point the finger and say, mm -hmm. you put me in this bondage, you made me like this. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that when we start to perceive it differently, that revelation unlocks our ability to say, you know what, I've hurt people too. I've, 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 I have been the cause of someone's pain, the same way you're the cause of my pain mm -hmm. in this moment. And when I realized that I was not my brokenness, I was not my toxicness, I was not my dysfunction, we should apply that for, mm. to, to the lives of other That's people. That's very, very good. That's very good because you actually then, what you're doing is you're not giving that toxic energy the power. Yeah. Whatever you think about the most will grow. You're keeping entangled. So if someone, if that person, let's say that your uncle, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but let's yeah. say that he's, <laughs> okay, so wherever he lives, it may be far away, it may be close, but let's say he lives 10,000 miles yeah. away. If you're still harboring the bitterness mm -hmm. um, and, and you still, you'll feel that pain inside of you. When we, when we have unforgiveness towards someone, you can feel it in your body. Your body yeah. acts as, we have these things called discomfort zones in our bodies, which are physical reactions that our body have has, like alarm bells, to warn us yeah. that something that we must pay, we must become aware, something's mm -hmm. not right. So with forgiveness, um, when we're not forgiving, that our alarm systems in our body will go off. And if we keep that, our body will break down. So we will get illness in our life. So our own bodies will get physically ill, our mind will be affected. Wow. So forgiveness is a protective, and this is not selfish, it's basically a protective factor for you physically. It's not excusing the other person's mm -hmm. behavior because that's not justifiable. What that yeah. person's done to murder someone out of jealousy is not something that's yeah. right. But that's not something that you can carry as a burden. And unforgiveness is a burden that we carry. Yeah. And it's toxic and it's breaking down the brain and the body. So when we can get that in our mind, it goes along with you change your perception. You don't understand what they've done is wrong. Jealousy is wrong. Murder is wrong. Um, but you can't get in that person's head yeah. because there's a bunch of reasons behind all of that. And mm. That's just something you can't really yeah. deal with. That's that person's issue. And yeah. I think when we don't forgive, what we're doing is keeping it. And scientifically, that's what you are. You, there's an invisible thread between mm. that toxic thought and that person. When they think about you, the, the marionette's happening, the puppet's happening, that energy is now pouring into you. Think of the energy thing. That's toxic energy from that person that you haven't that forgiven. You've kept, a, you've kept a pathway open. Wow. Literally, and that's what scientifically happens. That's what quantum physics shows us. And that's what people that teach on quantum physics and the quantum physicists themselves will say the key issue about quantum physics is love and forgiveness. Wow. And we have to, as human and humanity, its ability to choose is basically what quantum physics is. So there's one of the most fundamental sciences mm -hmm. that is teaching and showing us the most fundamental of principles, which is forgiveness and, and love. That so. is beautiful. I actually want to read, um, there's something you shared in your book on forgiveness. And I want to just read that a bit. And this is on, this is, you know, Think, Learn, Succeed. And it's on page 70. And you said that we are often told to forgive and forget the wrongs that we suffer. But it turns out that there is scientific truth and gut logic behind the common saying. Research shows that the details of a transgression are more susceptible to being forgotten when the, transgre the transgression has been forgiven. I find that fascinating because we often say that, well, I can forgive, but I'm not going to forget. Well, you remember, your, you remember what happened to your dad. You're never going to forget that. Yeah, so you're not that... forgetting in terms of the blanket, the Jesus yeah. blanket, the numbing thing. But what you're doing is you are kind of disassociating and forgetting that, that terrible trauma of the pain. So the this pain thing has been reconceptualized and you've changed. So that toxic has become... So even there's the tree. That's not that it's a happy tree. It's a sad mm -hmm. tree that your dad was uh, murdered by your uncle. That's very traumatic. But it's been reconceptualized as something that's now, um, the truth is that there's, you've disconnected. You're not going to absorb it into your system. Yeah. You're not going to let it affect your life. Yeah. And you're going to disconnect from them so they can't pour more toxic energy into you. And then that's when we now release them into, into God's hands, into love, to actually hopefully they will then identify what they did wrong right. and get themselves right because otherwise they're pouring more poison out on Not others. <laughs> but if we're so absorbed and caught up in that terrible pain, 
um, and we're not forgetting and what we're supposed to forget to answer your question is mm -hmm. we're supposed to forget the toxicity yeah we're supposed to remember the, the concept, hold that they had on the you hold. We forget that's what that. you forget that is what you're forgetting you don't ever forget yeah because you you have the memory of it yes but, but you the, forget. Imp the negative exactly. impact and, and is, the, is that's right yeah. and you know if you still got it because you'll get that uh, yeah you know, always, if you still got it i always felt like that phrase was more of an attitude you mm -hmm. know what I'm That's saying? Good. Toward it, like, like you don't treat the person based or or, or, on, or saying saying I'll forgive, but I won't forget is still you holding on to it. It is still mm -hmm. holding on to it. It's yeah. still you holding on to it. But saying I forgive and I for I forget. It's giving it away, and yeah. that's and that's it. It's more. I exactly. feel like it's more of like an attitude that it's not mine. I'm not owning. Yeah. I'm not owning what it is. You're not owning that. that pain. You're not owning that trauma. That's the other yeah. person. Because when we that. actually verbalize that, mm -hmm. we still want control. Yes, like exactly. Like when we when we use those phrases and say, "Well, I'll forgive. But I'm not going to forget." So we want control yes. of that situation. So exactly. we haven't really forgiven. Exactly. So wow. when you forgive and forget, you've really disentangled. You still remember the situation, but you've forgotten that pain. Um, you've forgotten that all the negative toxicity that surrounds that particular concept. Yeah. Yes, that's beautiful. So that's what you're forgetting. That's beautiful. And what? How? What would you say is the power of perception? Because I know in in your book you talk about how perception, um, how we perceive things, has the ability For us to, to create. Succeed. Yeah. yeah. It pretty much your perception will determine. Um, the success of your life you pretty much it's pretty much built around yeah. your mm -hmm. so uh, basically like take the example of forgiveness if the, in the situation with your uncle if I may mm -hmm. um, that situation you, your perception shifted from being one of this is um, this is terrible pain that I've experience but because of the forgiveness you've reshaped and changed your perception you're looking at it differently so this perception goes along with reconceptualization yeah where there's a new way of viewing it and it's a freedom way of view viewing it it's mm. looking at it from another angle mm. and that angle is looking at it from love and and love then is allowing that issue that situation that person to find the healing that they need so that they don't perpetuate that same kind of pain so it's a different it's a reconceptualized look it's a redesigned look the shift of perception. Yeah. So even as we talk about perception, um, Amber, I'll start this question with you. Have mm -hmm. you ever experienced, maybe even just with people, of, about holding on to what they categorize as uh, a mental illness mm -hmm. based on a, a gene or based on it being hereditary, um, that their mother dealt with this, their grandmother dealt with it, and so by nature or by biology mm -hmm. they have to deal with it that perception i like to yeah I, I i definitely have heard people say you know it's hereditary or mm -hmm. it runs in my family or you know whatever the, the phrasing is but um even for myself actually i had to change my perception of what i was dealing with in order to arrive to where i am right now yeah and that can be that can be really hard it can be because um the things that are spoken over you or the things that you speak feel like your reality. Wow. And so when you try to change your perception, sometimes in your mind you can think, okay, I'm, I'm in denial. You know, I'm in denial mm. of what's actually happening when what's actually happening isn't reality. So shifting your perspective, and, it's a hel and it was mm. a healthy shift. Yeah. You know, changing my perspective was actually healthy for me. Which was crazy for me to be like, no, I have anxiety, I have this disorder, and this is why this is happening. Because you feel like your understanding was actually happening in your body, but nothing is getting better. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you actually don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, perspective, perspective, changing my perspective is what started the journey. Yeah. And I and I think um, it'd be tough for people, and maybe a tough tough pill to swallow because you now have. Uh, started a different journey and sometimes it feels like starting over you're starting from square one um, and the journey the journey is harder but I'm, I'm now I'm now taking better steps to getting better as opposed to um, my other perspective was I just gotta get through it I just gotta <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just gotta get to work. I just gotta cool. get through work. And, and I, just that's like right, that's along the way kind And of I'm thing. literally doing this. Yeah. Wow. Back and forth. Back and, and that forth. Creates tremendous that increased your feelings of anxiety would have led to panic. But if I and... change my perspective, which changed my trajectory. If I mm -hmm. stopped doing this and I just turned and went this way, 
pathway is clear. Now I can, you know, now, now I can, you can go see. where I can go. So yeah. what you did there was mm-hmm. you were looking at your, your life through this diagnosis. Mm-hmm. If you look at your life through this, this is your perspective. This mm. is your view and it's toxic. Mm. So, and yours happened to be, okay, I've got an illness. Already you were suffering. Now you get told you have this brain disease, which makes you, which doesn't even exist, but you didn't know that maybe mm-hmm. till you, as you said, you read my work. But so you've got this model in your mind, this perspective that I'm sick, I'm anxious, I've got this disease. Um, and that perspective blocked you, just, but you change your trajectory, you pick that one up and you said, okay, no, this is not the case. I can actually control this. And you put on a different view. So perspective is a view. And when you have that view, it causes tremendous damage inside your brain and your body. And it wow. makes it really hard to physically function. Yes. You lose your energy. You feel physically that your physical body will increase symptoms of depression. Wow. Whereas that, you, you still got the same issue. You haven't fixed anything yet, but your perspective has shifted you. So your mindfulness, the first step, your awareness of that's the wrong perspective, you shifted to that. Now you're looking at life through that. Suddenly your brain responds and different energy flows, different neurotransmitter combinations mm. flow. You're into, you, you activate genetic switches that now increase your resilience. So now you, and you're easier to just be around and it's easier, you're more receptive, you're hearing things. You're very blocked in the zone. We're very not, I mean, very open. Yeah. in that zone so a whole lot of scientific stuff is happening in your brain and your body with your decision with your mind there so that brings me to the perspective of what you were saying about the genetic component yeah. the hereditary component there is no scientific basis for saying that it is hereditary wow. there's no yeah. gene there's no biolo- neurobiological um, basis for mental illness because mental illness doesn't exist yeah. what we have is trauma exists suffering exists that's mm-hmm. very real and that is hard and that is tough as we keep on saying so therefore what they've spent billions of dollars is trying to find the neurobiological correlates in the brain to say okay if you've got that kind of pattern in your brain then this is why you're doing it but just a recent study came out of Yale telling us that there is no normal brain because we're all completely unique. <laughs> Very and we all, so basically, we can't, that perspective is incorrect. We can't see um, the hereditary side because it's not scientific. It doesn't exist. What we have is an epigenetic factor. So, mm. yes, there can be a pattern of depression in the grandmother, the mother, and the grandmother. And the epigenetic and factor, how do you? What we're seeing is what we call epigenetics. Epi meaning over and above the gene. Mm. So, the genes have got like a little switch on the outside, it's a little chemical switch and that has to be activated to activate the gene and Mm. what switches all that physical stuff on is your thinking so thinking makes everything work in your body no thinking no body working so what you're saying is that because you just mentioned that the way we think our the way the way we think can be passed through the sperm and the ova yes Mm. so So it creates um because i know in your book you call it it creates a predisposition Mm. it creates a predisposition but it doesn't create destiny no it doesn't create destiny so what happens is that that toxic thought can be something that's coming through that wasn't dealt with in mm-hmm. maybe four generations back so yeah. there was you they saw a pattern in the family that was leading to so like anger depression anger, something. yes something mm-hmm. like that so a pattern in the family but that's that pattern is physically represented because we create matter out of mind so the thinking of the person four generations back switched on the gene that switched on the epigenome which is the, the little light switch which switched on mm-hmm. the gene which made the thought mm-hmm. didn't get dealt with passed the sperm and the over to the next generation didn't get dealt with got activated oh my, my mother's depressed or my father's depressed and that's what happens in our family so that's me so then we activate so that. by just even believing that just thinking it, it activates it seeing it seeing it in your environment wow. seeing in your wow. environment so it comes through your sleep zipped up but by you observing a parental mm-hmm. reaction or a life you know you're growing your upbringing um, activates it if you absorb it. If you say, oh, well, that's just how our family is, that unzips and activates. Or wow. you can say, I'm not going to do that. Mm. This is not going to be for my life. I'm going to destroy. So you can say this, is, and you go through those five steps over 63 days, and you destroy that. Mm-hmm. You literally break that pattern down. So there is a fact of the past. So there's a scientific through. guide to literally what Christians would define as you know, breaking generational curses. curses. That's what they were talking, yeah. spiritual language and scientific <laughs> and language. scientific, you can literally... There's a physical yeah. zipped up thing that's gone through. So it's not a gene that's, that's mm-hmm. hereditary that you can't control. And, and it's not automatically going to happen, but mm-hmm. the, predisposition, the predisposition is there, but it doesn't have to happen because you still control your life. You control. So you activate because it's asleep. It, ha- it has to be working, and it's up. only activated by how you think. think. So the responsibility Thinking, comes activate, back exactly. to you. Exactly, and if you activate it because that's your your child, and you don't know any better, and you're activating that thought pattern, but as you become more aware and able to control, you realize I don't want to be like that. Yeah. I don't want that. In- and that's enough 
for you that's the correct thinking energy thinking quantum energy that will go and destroy that thing it'll those yeah. switches will switch off and the thing won't have energy anymore and you pull the plug and it starts dying <laughs> that's literally yeah. what's happening wow. so you change that that's you know what, what i really love about this and i think even um a place to land this conversation and to wrap it up is in talking about the practical ways to heal there is there has to be a sense of determination mm, where mm. that you want you not so it begins by in part when we talked about awareness having the awareness that i don't have to stay this way my exactly. life is not hopeless mm -hmm. there is hope for me to change i can live my best life mm -hmm. um, cues the song no problem but that in the midst of that there has to be a sense of determination yes. and i think that that determination self regulation yeah and one of the things i believe drives that is self-esteem mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. us seeing ourselves the right way or seeing ourselves identity. Our, our identity how we view ourselves because if you if we can view ourselves to know that we can be better to know that I, I deserve to live my best life mm -hmm. <laughs> then we are motivated to be determined to do the work exactly that we can we we enjoy doing the work and Amber even what you shared is so powerful because it has a message of determination mm -hmm. and understanding that there is a version there's a there's a a higher version of you on the other side of this and the moment you began that process you tapped into that perfect you mm -hmm. and so I really love this conversation mm, and so just to wrap it up I want us to close in prayer and Amber I would love for you to um, to pray over everyone watching who is believing that you know I can be better I like this this is not the end for me yeah um, Lord I thank you for this time that we had together um, I pray for anyone that's watching that feels that they want to change their perspective of what's going on in their life. I pray that you would help them arrive to the right answers to start that journey. I pray that they will not fear a better version of themselves and they will understand that they can live their best life and have joy and have peace and have all of the things that you think for, uh, for us, Lord. And I pray that they won't run away from it. Um, I pray for this time together um, that it will be fruitful and there will be a, a major, amazing change in this generation um, because of this discussion and this amen. time. Um, in your name we pray, amen. 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 That was beautiful. Thank you, girl. That was, that was great. So good. So good. Thank, Thank you. you.